5, it might be suitable to make a comment here that his name and his mission and various aspects about him appear in numerous surahs, quote unquote, chapter in the Quran. Indeed, one of the surahs or chapters in the Quran takes its name after the name of Mary, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him. It's called Surat Maryam, the surah of Mary, and its number in the chronology of the Quran is 19. Now, while Muslims and Christians do differ, and we should make the point clear, do differ on the issue of divinity attributed to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and while they differ also on the issue of crucifixion, whether it happened, what the meaning of it is, even if it happened, what significance really does it have, I believe there is still an area of common ground that we may start from, that both Muslims and Christians believe in, respect, and love Jesus, peace be upon him. He is called in the Quran a prophet, messenger, messiah, anointed or messiah. He is described in a very tender way, especially in this surah number 19, as one who is blessed in this life and the hereafter and among those who are nearest to Allah, the Creator. I hope that while we all understand that interreligious understanding and dialogues might involve varying degrees of emotions, I do hope, however, that all of us here, belonging to Islam, Christianity, or other ways of life for that matter, approach tonight's evening with a loving atmosphere and with an open heart and open mind. It is my privilege and honor to present to you the first speaker, Professor Floyd Clark. Professor Clark is of the Philippi Church of Christ in Creswell in the United States. He is a professor emeritus of the Johnson Bible College in Knoxville, Tennessee. Presently, he travels throughout the world looking after the church groups which belong to his organization uh, and the various mission services organization. And he is at present based in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, professor Clark will be speaking for 15 minutes. Professor Clark. Mr. Moderator, my good friend, uh, Amadidat, distinguished guests and friends, I am so grateful to be here and to uh, participate in this most unusual dialogue. First, may I introduce to you some of my uh, people. Uh, first of all, my wife, Clara, down here in front, Clara Clark. Um, We are only married uh, five months, and we spent part of our honeymoon in Durban and visited with Ahmed and his family and uh, treasure those moments. On me, with me on the platform also is Brother Richard Bourne, my host uh, this week and a former a graduate, uh, a former student of mine, a graduate of our school and now at work here in London with the uh, uh, Barrett uh, Church of Christ in Hendon, uh, Brother Richard Bourne. Uh, somewhere around here is the fellow that got this all started uh, back in 1962. One of my other students was at work in South Africa and uh, uh, succeeded in uh, getting Brother Didat to agree to a public discussion over some of the things which he had said. 
And uh, thus, this man got launched into a ministry that has carried him worldwide. Al Hamilton himself has been involved in mission work all the way from South Africa to uh, Papua New Guinea, and he and his wife are here somewhere. Uh, Annette. He's lost as usual. <laughs> okay, Al. So delighted to have Al with us. When this came up, I said, you got me into this, you got to be here tonight. Other members and friends, we have Dr. Weidman and his family. Uh, Dr. Weidman is not only a former student, but a, <clears throat> a fellow professor at Johnson Bible College, now dean at Lincoln Christian College in Lincoln, Illinois, and uh, here for a summer term teaching in, uh, in uh, our college here in, in, in the United Kingdom. <clears throat> Uh, may we go to the Lord in prayer, please. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for the tone that has already been set in this meeting and for the earnest words of these who have spoken to the situation. And uh, Lord, I'm grateful that others beside myself are interested in building bridges between these people that are so uh, numerous of these two great faiths. And we pray tonight that uh, we shall be able to communicate and to share and that uh, no one will go home this evening without having been profited by these discussions. May your grace attend us, for we pray in the name of our Lord and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> My uh, preparation for this discussion, as I've already intimated, started many years ago when Al succeeded in getting Brother Ahmed to agree to a public discussion. He wrote me and said, you're going to have to come down and engage in this discussion. And I made preparations to do so, and they were held uh, in uh, uh, South Africa, 1963, uh, one in the uh, City Hall in Johannesburg and one in the City Hall in Durban. But by the time those discussions came around, I was hindered by responsibilities at uh, uh, Johnson Bible College, and I sent uh, my colleague, Dr. Cyril Simpkins, and uh, he reported to us later that he had a very respectful hearing uh, from uh, all of the people on both occasions. Uh, I was not able personally to meet Ahmed and uh, exchange uh, views with him until two years ago when uh, I was able to visit Durban and uh, he invited me out to his home and we spent some 14 hours in rather vigorous and often loud discussions. Uh, I then was able this uh, past March and April to uh, return to Durban, and my wife and I were on three different occasions entertained in the Didat home, and uh, my wife enjoyed the hospitality of Mrs. Uh, Didat as well. I, uh, I want everyone to understand that I do not come here to uh, uh, engage in some sort of contest to ridicule my friend or make problems for him. I do not come as an enemy but as a friend, and I value his friendship very highly. <clears throat> uh, before uh, we begin, and I hesitate to do this, not knowing exactly how my words will be taken, but I feel obliged both for Ahmed and myself uh, to, rem uh, to make a remark about what happened last Wednesday night to us, he and myself both here at the Central Mosque in uh, London. I think you were very unkind to my friend because uh, you gave him an assignment he said he had never had opportunity to prepare to do, and when uh, he attempted to speak to the subject and then turned to other matters, somebody sent a note uh, to him while he was still speaking to get back to the subject. 
I uh, think that was most unkind to treat a guest like that. And uh, I was also uh, a little bit uh, uh, concerned because you asked me to occupy the uh, speaker's table along with Brother Ahmed, but uh, you didn't give me an opportunity either to greet the audience or to speak.